Hey, Aubrey, how's it going? I'm great. How are you, Jessica? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is so exciting. So guys, we are starting this new year by focusing on speaking this week because we know that can be the scariest part of the exam. Absolutely, right? It takes a ton of preparation and that's where nerves can really hit. You know, you're facing a real person. You have to think about so many things, not only the great vocab, the great pronunciation, but timing. That's what we get a lot of questions about and we want to really clear it up so you guys have a very good idea what to expect on test day. Exactly. So if you have been listening to this podcast for a while, you know that IELTS has changed the way they require examiners to time you on the speaking test. They are much stricter now with how examiners handle the time. And that means examiners have to interrupt you a lot more often. We talked about this last year, um, but we're going to review these rules quickly today. But remember, guys, you can get a complete outline of all the IELTS changes. Go to allearsenglish.com slash new IELTS. It's a free ebook. It's over 50 pages of information. So check that out, allearsenglish.com slash new IELTS. Okay, so let's focus on timing, timing, timing. We had a great question um, from, actually we have two great questions about this. So the first question was from, I think a YouTube subscriber. So if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you. Um, this is from Akash. So Akash said that he recently, or she, <laughs> they recently took the IELTS speaking exam and they thought the examiner didn't allow for the full time because the examiner kept interrupting them during their answers. And so they're worried about their results. Now, Aubrey, does this automatically mean that this person's going to score low because they were interrupted? No, that's the most important thing to know is that if the examiner interrupts you, it's actually a good sign because it means you're so fluent, you had tons to say, so it's not hurting your score at all. And in fact, is boosting your fluency score because you were sharing lots of detail. You mm -hmm. were going in deeper, so the examiner had to interrupt you. So that's the first thing. Don't let you, don't let yourself think, oh, my score might be going down. Instead, get a boost of confidence that from that, right? I had so much to say. I had to be interrupted. Yeah, totally. And we're going to give you three tips to practice for this new timing, this new way of taking the speaking exam. We're going to give you three tips for how to practice that in just a minute. Um, but that's exactly right, guys. When the examiner interrupts you, it's not about you. <laughs> like, I think it's just, it can cause such panic and stress. And then you start totally. speaking more poorly, right? Because you're worried. So don't be worried. This is about the examiner's requirements for their performance, not yours. Um, now, here's another great question. Will there be a clock in the room uh, to watch during the speaking exam? There's not supposed to be. There's supposed to actually take down the wall clocks. If there is a wall clock, then the examiner will be facing it. You, the candidate, will not be facing it. Okay? You should not be able to see a clock. And I think I think that's good because you can't also think about watching the seconds and counting the minutes or whatever while you're speaking. So Nope. Even if there is a clock, don't look at it, but there shouldn't be a clock. It's the examiner's great bane to be keeping track of these seconds and minutes. Yeah, it's not that easy to be asking questions and also watching the time closely for an examiner, but it's actually so, much, so very helpful for you to not be so stressed about the exact time so you yeah. can worry about what you're saying. But that being said, that's why it's so important for you to know what it feels like, exactly. how long you're supposed to answer the question. So instead of worrying about the exact seconds, you have a good idea for the feel of how long your answer should be. Exactly. That's exactly what we're talking about today, guys. You have to practice this very precise timing and being interrupted. You have to practice this. Now is when you worry about the seconds, right? Now is when you yep. practice and worry about all this. So on test day, you are ready. You know exactly what to expect. You have a good feel for how long or short your answers should be. And then you don't worry when the examiner interrupts you.
Yes. And as to this question we got, yeah, first of all, don't be stressed if you're being interrupted. But also that examiner definitely asked all the questions they needed to. They did take the full time, but it might not have felt that way because of the changes Jessica was mentioning that totally. it might feel like you don't have as much time to talk because actually you don't due to these changes. So let's get into how long each answer should be so you guys know exactly what to practice. So in total, guys, part one lasts for four to five minutes and part three lasts also for four to five minutes. Part two is three to four minutes and that's a, another timing issue. That is, we've talked about that a lot before, um, but we're focusing on part one and part three today. So think about this, guys. Maximum five minutes for each part, right? Part one, there's a total of 11 questions. Part three, a total of six questions. So your answers cannot be that long because again, the examiner has to ask you all of these questions now in that short amount of time. So let's get into this. The first important thing that you have to do before the speaking exam is practice with a timer, all right? Because you have to practice being cut off at a certain point. What do you think is the best point to cut yourself off for part one, Aubrey? I think you should set your timer for 40 seconds. And then when that timer goes off, you want to practice finishing confidently instead of that like uh, 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 trail off like you're thrown off, right? Finish your answer confidently and then be ready for the examiner to jump right in with the next question. Yeah, totally. So what happens on the test is when the examiner interrupts you, it's not like they, you know, stand up and shout, stop talking or something. Right. Like it's not, it's not like a dramatic, like, shut your face thing. Um, it's done politely and calmly and quietly. So usually all the examiner does when the examiner is keeping track of their timer, right? So the examiner is always glancing at their timer while you're talking. Um, and when they think that they need to get, get on to the next question, all they do is hold up their hand and then say, thank you, or that's enough. <laughs> no, they're supposed to just say thank you and go immediately to the next question. So don't like try to keep talking and finish your answer. The examiner needs to move on. They have told you that. They have told you to stop talking. <laughs> so just give like a one word response. Be like, oh, thank you. Great. Cool. Nice. Like any of these one words just to acknowledge that you're moving on, right? Just finish and move on. Let the examiner ask the next question. So we recommend setting a timer for 40 seconds for your part one answers. And for part two, a little bit longer. No, sorry, part three. Part three, a little bit longer, right? Because um, there are fewer questions to answer in part three. So no more than a minute. Set your timer for a minute. And as soon as that timer goes off, that alarm goes off, handle it the same way as if you were interrupted in part one. Just be like, okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> Exactly. So that sort of confident finish is just like you were saying, just like one confident word and then immediately know the examiner is going to ask the next question, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think it's so important, this second tip we're going to give you too, that you have to realize you don't have time to think between each question on part one and part three. I've spoken to students in classes where once we get down to it, I realize that's how they're practicing. They read a question and they, they stop and think about it for a while every time. That is not how it is on test day. So you have to be thinking about this with your practice. Right, like I've even, um, yeah, I've had that same experience, Aubrey, where I'll be doing a mock speaking test with a student and we get to part three and I ask a question and they're like, can I take notes? Like, can I think about right. this? <laughs> like, no, no, you cannot. Um, so definitely this is just another way that you really have to know this test inside and out. You have to practice exactly what's going to happen on test day so you are 100% confident and prepared, right? So yeah, in part two, you can take notes. Yes, great. You have a minute. Awesome. Part two is like this outlier. Part one and part three, it's like question, answer, question, answer. 
kind of, you know, more like it is in real life, if not exactly like real life. Uh, part, two, part two is the, the outlier, guys. <laughs> That's the only time you get to take notes. But yes, like Aubrey said, you have to practice answering as soon as the examiner finishes that question. Why is it so important to not have that silence or that like reflection thinking time. It lowers your fluency and coherence score, right? If you have a pause at the beginning of your answer and aren't saying anything, you just can't get a seven or higher for fluency. You have to have some kind of filler phrase. You have to start talking immediately. It's exactly. okay to need a couple of seconds to think of how you want to answer. But while you're thinking, you have to have some kind of filler mm -hmm. so that there's no pause. Exactly, exactly. That lowers your score. Any silence lowers your score. All right. Now, tip three. What's tip three, Aubrey? Ideally, if you can practice with a speaking partner who can pretend to be the examiner, right? Because it is a little difficult to have a list of questions, never have seen them yet, ask one, answer, stop yourself, ask the next one, right? Whereas if you have a speaking partner, then you can just worry about answering the questions and your partner can be asking those questions and paying attention to the timing. Mm -hmm. So find someone online if you don't know someone else practicing for IELTS or learning to speak English. Mm -hmm. This is definitely something that can be done over Zoom. Exactly, exactly. Um, we give speaking tests on Skype and Zoom all the time, guys. So if you're a three key student, you can sign up to have a mock speaking test with us and we'll keep track of the time. Um, but for now, guys, be aware that tomorrow on IELTS Energy, we are going to do um, a model of how this goes of how this looks um really being strict with the time with each other in part one and part three we'll take turns tomorrow and we'll interrupt each other because i know we'll talk too much so <laughs> stay tuned tomorrow guys for how to time that out and how to respond to that um and in the meantime while you wait for tomorrow's episode guys go to allearsenglish.com slash new ielts and get that complete outline of the changes that ielts has made Awesome. Thanks, Jessica. This is really fun. I'll see you tomorrow for those fun uh, practice speaking answers. Awesome. Can't wait. Bye, Aubrey. <laughs> Bye.